All right, good morning, everybody. Big house we're doing today. About 33, 34 yards. We got 33 yards coming to the job, so we're hoping those three trucks do it. Uh, it's gonna be close, so we might need a balance load. This is it right here. About 2,400 square feet. After you prime out, we'll we'll work the floor this way too. So if we do run out, we can run out over there. And yeah. I still think you could wash out and leave if you had to. All right, perfect. All right, getting going. First, first driver. I'll, I'll get it. Thanks. First driver right here. Yeah. I've, He says his dad watches me all the time on YouTube, so I just want to make sure I got him on camera. Big house, man, up here on China Lake. China, Maine. In case you guys have never been to China, you have now. All right, supposed to be four inch floor. Pretty straightforward, four inches, 3,500 microfiber. We're just matching the top of this wall right here, so that makes pouring the floor pretty easy. Got my grade shot on the other day. Using my nice new DeWalt laser. We love this laser. Nice, easy to set up. Self-leveling, just screw it in and hit the on button. Self-levels itself. Just like that. Takes a couple seconds and then she'll start spinning. Ah, I must have really been out of level. There we go. And then I just set my grade right to the top of the wall. It's as easy as it is to set grade. Now the wall is going to fluctuate up and down, you know, probably an eighth of an inch. So we just try to get an average. I'll check a few spots. No, oh, good there. We'll go with that. What time it is right now? I know mud was supposed to be 608. Pretty close to being on time. Hey guys, we've been battling a couple things this year. And because we had a concrete plant closed that's right local to us, and we used to use them a lot. This year, we're still getting concrete pretty much every day, but we gotta make sure we order it well in advance, have it on the books, and then hope it doesn't rain that day. Uh, otherwise, if you know it's two or three weeks to reschedule that one job, but so so this company here we're pouring with today, we had two things we kind of had to worry about today. First off is you know they like us to start at 6 a.m. and that really isn't that big a deal. We kind of like starting early, then we're done pouring early, and they also like us to start that early because they know we dump trucks right out and we get them right back, so they can have them for their next job. So, I mean, that's really not that big an issue. The other issue is just getting enough trucks. Like this job, it you know, it was right on the borderline of 32, 33 yards. You can see it's got those deep pocket areas in there. And then the subgrade, I mean, the subgrade wasn't great. It was up and down a little bit. So you're kind of shooting all kinds of grades everywhere to see how thick the concrete is. And then you're, you're figuring your yardage and, you know, you're hoping you don't run out. And all they could, the concrete company, all they could give us was three trucks. I mean, legally, legally, each truck can hold 10 and a half yards on, you know, as far as the weight limit on the roads in Maine. Now, sometimes they'll still throw 11 yards on a truck. I mean, the truck will hold more than 10 and a half. So they'll just put 11 on and hope that they don't get caught and get fined sometimes. I mean... Uh, a lot of all the concrete companies have done that since I've been pouring, pouring concrete my whole life and rarely I mean rarely do they ever get caught for being overweight today it was like three trucks this thing figures right around 33 yards can you send us 311s so they agreed to send us 311s if 33 you know and you gotta have a yard of concrete for the pump so um, if 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 33 yards, really 32 yards, doesn't do it, then we're gonna wait for that third truck to drive all the way back to the concrete plant, get loaded with you know whatever balance we might need, 
and then get back up here. And that would be that would be over an hour for him just to get back with even a yard or two. As we're as we're pouring this out, you know, we're we're just keeping an eye on. Well, if the first truck goes to here, we have this all measured out. If the first truck can get to here, and then the second truck can get to here, then we think we might do it with three trucks. Now that's what we're kind of hoping on each each truck here. We're still on the first truck right now. And we were just hired, like we're hired on a job like this. We're working for the foundation guys, but we know the builder too really well. We've been we've been doing floors for these guys for a long time. And the builder and his guy, the excavator, they kind of work together with the subgrade, so they get they get the subgrade all prepped. They actually laid the plastic on this. They laid the styrofoam. They get it all ready. All we really were hired to do is come up here and just pour and finish the concrete. Um, the design or all that stuff is is all has nothing to do with us. It's just, Mike, we need you to get the concrete poured and finished today. And that's what we're hired to do. Now, we're using a 3500 PSI concrete. We've got fiber mesh in it for reinforcement. we got mid-range water reducer in it to help with you know, pouring at a little bit looser slump, but not lose any strength. Now that's where the first truck went. <laughs> and a lot of times, like when you pump, remember it takes about a yard of concrete just to fill the pump, the hopper and all the hose, just to get concrete out the end of the hose, it takes about a yard of concrete. So that first truck never really goes as far as what you might think it should. And this one definitely didn't. After this first truck, I'm thinking to myself, ooh, man. I don't know. It's not looking good right now. We didn't even fill that one deep area in right there. But the second truck's up there. He's mixing up. And we're going to get him dumped here shortly. But we like to, like when we dump 10, when we dump 11 yards out like this, we like to get it all dumped right out, get that truck out of the way, and then get that truck screeded before we start dumping any, any other truck. Especially if there's... You know, there's just four of us today. Harvey's up here helping out. He's the guy in the yellow shirt. He works for himself. Though, so, I mean, a lot of times it's just me, Darren, and Luke doing stuff like this. And we don't like to, I mean, we, we'll we we'll dump a truck out easy enough. One truck goes at four inches. One truck will go around 800 square feet. That's not that much for us three. You know, we'll we'll dump 800 square feet out in, in no time and then get it screeded. Especially if we're using, you know, a battery screed like this. What helps having the extra guy like Harvey is it allows one guy to do a couple other things. Either either that one guy can just grab the bull float and get things bull floated, and then we can just start dumping again. Or that one guy can be shooting pads, you know, grade pads if we haven't got them all shot yet. So that works out nice. And then when we're pouring like this, having the extra guy you know, obviously Darren's holding the hose, and then one guy's usually coming behind him, kind of tuning the concrete in, raking it around, tuning it in. All right, let's figure out where 11 yards is going to go here. So the 1, 2, 3, 24, 6, that's about 30. 30, 11, times 81, so 900 square feet. So it could go down to about 30. 1820 got to get so this truck's got to get right about to here got to get to here to have a chance yeah if we get to here we're going to be close yeah so what i was doing right there is i was just figuring the square footage of that back piece by counting the sheets of styrofoam each piece of styrofoam is eight by four so it's 32 square feet and if we get this truck right here that we're dumping right now to that joint, I don't know if you guys saw the joint in the foundation when I move the camera, you'll see where they put like a control joint in the foundation. If this truck can make it to about that joint, then that third truck has a really good chance of finishing this off without us running out. We're going to try to get this truck dumped right out, you know, about as fast as we can so we can make that decision on... on you know what we do with the third truck do we do we get him dumped out see if he's going to make it or if this truck goes far enough and we feel pretty confident that he's going to make it then we get this truck all 
get the pads all shot, get the edges all mag floated here, and then get it screeded, and then dump the third truck. Because, like I said, it's going to be a while to get that truck back, and probably we'll probably be on it by power trials before that truck even gets back to finish if we run out. You can kind of see the joint up there where I got the bull float up against the wall in the back. That control joint to the right of the bull float in the foundation. That's where we got to get this second truck dumped out. At least to there. Maybe a little bit past there would even be better. Now, already it seems like this second truck has done more of an area than the first truck. That's just the way it goes. Which it probably has, actually, if we, if we were to physically measure it out. Now, if Darren makes it all the way down here to this wall without running out, now I'm starting to feel a little bit better about, about this. And it, it looks like he did, you know. I'm, we can get, I don't know if I'll turn my head and get a little better shot of it here, but we're, we did make it a little bit past that joint. So it's going to be close. And then if we're high at all in here, you can see we got we got over 800 square feet dump, dumped out right here. Now we got to get it all screeded. I I shoot the pads with a laser. I got my Dewalt laser there. I'm shooting the pads with, and I set the height of those pads. We call them wet pads, and then we strike them off by hand. That's just the way we like to do it. You could strike them off with the battery screed too from from MBW here, the screed demon. Uh, we just we've always done them by hand. That's just the way we do it And then you know, we'll jump on each what we call a bay I'm you know when I get down to the end of that wet pad, that'll be a bay So we'll just do one bay at a time a bay is about the size of the the screed board there 12 feet 14 feet We just take it one bay at a time and we pull them down and you know next thing you know we got that truck all screeded out get it bull floated and then we can move on to the third truck now as we're dumping this I mean that first truck that first truck this was quite a good little ride for the concrete company so that first truck was setting up pretty good even the second one sometimes sometimes if those trucks arrive right back to back you know the while you're dumping the first truck the second guy he'll he'll be up there and he'll just stop mixing uh, before you're even kind of ready for him so he gets his concrete all mixed up in the drum and then and then he just sits there for a few minutes whatever it takes us to get the first truck dumped out screeded bull floated you know 10 15 let's say 20 minutes and he's already been up there the second truck's already been up there all mixed up well he starts getting what we call hot all that truck sitting in the drum is just heating up and it starts setting up quicker once you get it laid out like this and that's that's kind of what we're finding now with the second truck is this stuff setting up pretty good not so fast that we're behind or nothing like that but you can just tell it has a little bit of a stickiness to it and that's gonna that's gonna become a factor here in a few minutes you'll see after we start dumping the third truck and then we go to start screeding it off and remember that second truck there's still there's still the whole hopper full in the drum of that second truck and then all this pipe including all the boom is still concrete from the second truck because he can't just pump that out to nothing he you know he, he can't just pump air out of there and push concrete out he needs new concrete in the hopper to push out old concrete that's in the hose you see that third trucks up and back there now he's kind of mixing and we're getting just getting towards the end of the second truck and we did make it by that joint i'm feeling a lot better about see the joint right there i'm magging by it so we're feeling a lot better about if this third truck's going to make it or not see how the concrete mags out pretty good and here here we got the third truck just about just about all dumped out we did stop over there at the end way on the left we left a little bit of a low spot there in case we're high. We wanted to get it as dumped out as much as possible just to see if he was going to run out. Because if he did, then we he'd just wash out and head back while we're doing all this stuff. But he still had some left in the drum. So we stopped him before we get too much in here. 
and you can see you can see this this is the end of that second truck he's setting up pretty good that's why we just decided to pull this down by hand sometimes it's just a little quicker to do it by hand versus using the vibra screed because you get a little more down pressure when you're when you're grabbing onto that thing and you're pushing down and screeding by hand it just goes a little bit faster off that stuff that's really really setting up good on you and that's all we need to do we just needed to get off that second truck once we got onto the third truck you know, everything was good switch back to the battery screed and off we go you see how easy that is the battery screed I mean really uh, Harvey and Darren are doing most of the work I'm just kind of slowly walking backwards keeping it at the right height going nice and steady and then Luke's Luke went in that middle section I I actually could have done that with a vibra screed but Luke just said he'd go grab a small screed get around that pipe and just take some of that middle section down and then he's gonna jump on the bull float you can see he's right there jumping on the bull float getting that done we got we, we got more handles we could put on that bow float too. If we had to, we could get it all from the outside. It's just a little easier doing it. We got those this what is it, three handles I think he's got on there. So about eighteen feet of handle plus a couple feet of reach from your arms. You can go about twenty feet pretty easy. That thing with the yellow cap on it, that's gonna end up being an electrical outlet in the floor. And they don't usually set those to grade. It'd be nice if they could just cut them off, set them to grade, but they don't. It's got a couple more pipes to go around right there. That slows us down a little bit, but it's not too big a deal to go around them. The trick is just making sure you get everything really nice and flat around those pipes. It is a pretty good shot of Luke Bull floating. Now the concrete truck's taken off. He's going to go up there and wash because there's enough concrete in the hopper of the pump truck to finish off whatever little bit we have left to do. So instead of him just waiting there for us, for us to get done, he can go up and get his chutes all washed up. And then we'll just lug our tools up to him and start washing all the tools. Well, this floor was about 22, 2300 square foot. Good little size basement. You put the basement, the first floor together, and I don't know if there was going to be a second floor. I mean, that's going to be, that'll be over 4,000 square feet right there and just the basement in the first floor. And then there's a two bay garage going on to this. And then another like barn floor going on that's not attached to the house right up above over here on the right. We got those floors coming up real soon, I'll show you. All right, it's nine o'clock in the morning. Probably about an hour or so after we got done pouring. Things tearing up really good. The sun's out today, it was actually supposed to only be cloudy. So it's drying even a little quicker than we thought it might. I'm guessing we'll be done here by 11, 11.30, we'll be done. All sod and everything. Now, as far as the timing on the finishing goes, I was right. We was done it's right in between 11 and 11.30. This thing was all power trial, burnt out, shined out, whatever you want to call it. And we got the saw cuts in it. We put a ton of saw cuts in it to help control uh, any cracking. It did, I mean, it did cure up. I call it dry it up. And I mean, it did cure up really fast in the sun. It was hot out today. Uh, Luke and Darren, they could keep up with it really easy with these two three-foot MBW power trials. One that one Luke has is is the newer one with the lights on it and the power pitch handles, power button handles for pitching the blades. And then Darren's got the high torque one. That that thing uh, spins up, has really really fast RPMs. That's a rugged machine. That that machine can cover a lot of floor. They both can really. But anyway, it finished up really, really good. Uh, if you want to learn how to do this, check out the link for the Concrete Underground below. I got all my training videos in there. If you got any questions, you know, leave it down in the comments. Thanks for watching. We'll see you on the next one.